What is up guys, today we are back with another top 5 combat money making methods with combat, but today's video is going to be for high levels. I've been wanting to make this for a long time and I just recently unlocked a ton more content by finally deciding the quest. This video will be similar to my top 5 money making methods with combat for mid levels, but this will be for high levels instead. If you have not watched those videos, there are 4 of them in the description with very profitable monsters to train on for major bank as a mid level, and I also have one for lower levels as well. I plan on making more of these for high levels, so comment below if you have a monster in mind. If you enjoy this video, go ahead and leave a like, and definitely subscribe to continue to see my content, and thank you to everyone for helping us reach 4,000 subscribers. Keep in mind, the order of the monsters in this video are in no particular order, and before we start, I want to tell you guys my stats. I have 90 attack, 91 strength, 89 defense, 93 range, 70 prayer, 85 magic, and 94 hit points. You definitely do not need these exact stats to do these methods in the video, but because these are money makers with combat for high levels, I would recommend having base 90 stats as that will increase your GP per hour, but you can do these with lower stats as well. Now, let's get into the video. The first monster is one of my personal favorites, the Rune Dragon. In order to kill this monster, you need to have completed Dragon Slayer 2, which is locked behind a lot of quests and stats, one being 200 quest points. This is a high level guide, so keep in mind some of these will require quests or skills. I would recommend that you have 90 base combat stats to do rune dragons effectively and for more money. However, you can do these with lower stats too. The gear we'll be using is the Helm of Nata's Knot, Bando's Chestplate, Bando's Tacits, an Unholy Symbol, an Amulet of Torture, a Fire Cape, Berserker Ring and Butte. Barrow's Gloves, Dragon Defender, the Dragon Hunter Lance, and Insulated Boots. You have to wear insulated boots because the Rune Dragons use a special attack where they send electricity underneath you and the boots help deny the damage. You can also wear full Justice Shard instead and be extra tanky, however this will cause your kills to be slower. You can also use the Dragonfire Shield instead of the Defender as well and get even more defensive bonuses. If you cannot afford this gear, you can use any weapon that has a high stat bonus like the Zamoraki and Hasta, and you can use lower tier gear like Barrow's Armor. In the inventory we have one Super Extended Anti-Fire Potion, one Dose, one Super Combat Potion, one Dose, a Dixite Pendant to teleport to the Rune Dragons, a Bando's God Sword to lower the Rune Dragon stats, four Prayer Potions to pray Piety and protect from magic, a rune pouch with runes to teleport to my house after my kills, and then I can rebank and come back, and the rest of the inventory is sharks. Additionally, you can use dragon claws to spec out the rune dragons, I have seen many people use those before, or you can use the dragon warhammer as it is a one-handed weapon instead of the bando's godsword, but I am using the bando's godsword because I cannot afford dragon claws or the warhammer at this time. With this gear you should average 4 kills in inventory, so I will not be bringing high alchemy runes. Once you are geared and ready to go, use the dig site necklace and teleport to Lithkrin. If you have not unlocked this teleport yet, it is very simple. I suggest that you just look it up. If you do want a full in-depth guide on how to do rune dragons, let me know in the comment section and I will definitely make that happen. Once at Lithkrin, run down the stairs and open the door. Run straight and on the right, jump the gate and you will be at the rune dragons. Pray protect for magic and piety. Pot up, use your Bando's Godsword spec. And if it hits, put your Dragon Hunter Lance back on, and if your spec does not hit, try specking with it again, and then start killing the dragon. Rune Dragons are very profitable, and they will always drop Dragon Bones and a Runite Bar. In addition to that, they also drop the Rune Plate Body, Longsword, Mace, Scimitar, Warhammer, and Plate Legs. They also drop Dragon Plate Legs, Plate Skirt, and Medhelm. They also drop Rune Arrows, Wrath Runes, Chaos Runes, and Death Runes. They also drop Grimy Herbs, such as the Avento, Renar Weed, Snapdragon, and Torstool. Other items include Rune Javelin Heads, Runite Bolts Unfinished, the Dragon Stone, Runite Ore, Dragon Javelin Heads, Dragon Bolts Unfinished, and the rare, more valuable items that the Rune Dragons drop are Dragon Limbs worth 3.7 mil, Dragon Metal Lump worth 2 mil, the Draconic Visage worth 5 mil, and also an Elite Clue Scroll. If you kill Rune Dragons, you can make a minimum of 1 mil GP per hour and up to 1.5 mil an hour if you pay close attention. Also, while filming this, I also got the Dragon Limbs, which are worth 3.7 mil, I've had crazy RNG lately. The next method is quite fun, but does require a little more time and patience. It is the Corporal Beast. This high level monster has some requirements that must be met in order to be done effectively. If you're going to solo corp, which is quite fun and somewhat relaxing, you need to have a player owned house with an ornate rejuvenation pool and also a jewelry box with a game necklace teleport. If you're going to do corp in a group, then one person must have this in their player owned house and everyone without one must use their friend's house. If soloing, you will also need at least 90 base stats and I recommend you max out your melee stats if you plan on soloing because groups will crash you and steal the kill which I will explain more later. The Corporal Beast requires some specific gear to kill, so pay close attention to the items I am using and bringing, and if you want an ultimate noobs guide on how to do Corp with super specific in-depth details, let me know in the comment section and I will do that, because this video is just going over the basics. The armor we will be using is Full Melee Void, the Amulet of Torture, the Dragon Warhammer, Dragon Defender, Primordial Boots, Berserker Ring Imbued, 
Unholy Symbol, and the Fire Cape. Keep in mind, I am soloing Corpse, so this is the best gear for soloing. You can also use Full Caros, the Nate is not Helm, Full Bandos. It really depends on if you are in group or if you are soloing, and if you have Void or not. If you do have Void, I just recommend using Void as it is the easiest, and you do not have to do any switches. In the inventory, we have the Arc Light, Bandos God Sword, Zamorakian Spear, Dwarf Cannon, 2k Cannonballs, 3 Per Potions, 1 Super Combat Potion, a Rune Pouch with Teleports, 2 House Runes, and the rest of the inventory is Manta Rays and Karam Wands. If you have not done Corp before, you may be confused as to why we have so many different spec weapons. The reasoning for this is because Corp is extremely strong and powerful, and you have to lower its stats to zero before you can kill it effectively and timely. The Dragon Warhammer, Arcane Light, and Bando's God Sword all lower Corp stats, and if you use them in the correct order and the correct amount, you will basically make Corp have all its stats to zero. You must use three Dragon Warhammer specs without hitting a zero, then you must use 20 Arclight specs, then you must do 200 damage with the Bando's Godsword specs, and then you must finish off Corp with the Zamorakian Spear. Corp negates 50% of damage if the weapon is not a spear and on stab, so the Zamorakian Spear will be used to finish off Corp when all the specs are done. Additionally, if you are going to do Corp, I recommend using Rune Light with the Corp plugin as it tracks your specs and tells you how many you have done as well as how much damage the BGS has done. Once you are ready, teleport to your player owned house and teleport to the Corp Cave. Make sure to have Protect from Magic and Pideon at all times during your kills. Once at the Corp Cave, find an empty world, which is honestly pretty difficult and then run into the cave. Set up your cannon close to the entrance, and then use your Dragon Warhammer specs on Corporal Beast. Then teleport to your house, restore your stats and spec, and teleport back to Corp and complete your 3 Dragon Warhammer specs. Continue this process but with 20 Arclight specs and then 200 damage with the BGS, and then begin killing Corp with the Zamorakian Spear. Corp will use a Dark Energy Core to attack you and heal the Corp Beast at the same time. The Dark Energy Core can be avoided if you step 2 tiles away in between your hits, or you can hope your cannon will hit the core in midair, causing it not to respawn. Once Corp is dead, grab the drop and repeat this process. If you solo corp, this will take around 10 to 15 minutes per kill, and if you use a group of three or more, it'll take close to 10 minutes per kill on average or quicker if you add more people. Now remember, this is not an in-depth guide on how to do corp, so it may feel a little overwhelming, but I promise you corp is quite simple and super easy to do once you figure it out. If you do want a guide from me explaining it in detail, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, look it up on the old school RuneScape wiki to get a better understanding. Corp can be extremely profitable depending on the drops, and the drops include the Mystic Air Staff, Water Staff, Earth Staff, Fire Staff, Rope Top, and Rope Bottom, 175 Onyx Bolts Enchanted, 2000 Cannonballs, Adamant Arrows, Runite Bolts, Law Runes, Cosmic Runes, Death Runes, and Soul Runes. Corp also drops Adamant Ore, Runite Ore, Adamant Bars, Teak Planks, Mahogany Logs, Magic Logs, Green Dragon Hide, Ross Shark, and Pure Essence. It can also drop watermelon seeds, coins, white berries, desert goat horns, tuna potatoes, antidotes, the spirit shield, renar seeds, and holy elixir. The items that make the most bank by far and are why Corp is camped by so many people are the Spectral Sigil, which is worth 60 mil, the Arcane Sigil, which is worth 130 mil, and the Elijah Sigil worth 820 mil. The average Corp Beast kill, including its unique drops, is estimated to be around 477k GP, making soloing Corp worth over 1 mil per hour easily. The GP per hour is really dependent on what gear, how efficient you are, and if you are soloing during Corp as a group, and obviously on the drops as well. I would say Corp is at least 1 mil an hour, and most definitely more if you use a group of 2 or 3. I've done Corp for around 30 minutes with 4 people and made 500k in a few kills. It only takes one good drop to do that. Soloing Corp can be extremely rewarding and make you major bank, but remember you will be crashed if you have lower stats. I was crashed and the group got an Arcane Sigil from Corp after I set up Corp for 10 minutes. Would that Arcane have been mine if I killed Corp? Possibly, but we will never know. Be aware of this and try not to be upset if people crash you. The next monster is a popular monster with Slayer and Iron Man. It is the Demonic Gorillas. This monster is unlocked after completing Monkey Madness 2, and I would recommend 90 range and 90 base melee stats. However, you can do these with 80 base stats if you have completed the quest with those lower stats. The gear we'll be using will include ranging and melee gear. The range gear we will be using is the Slayer Helm imbued because we are on task for Black Demons and the Demonic Gorillas count as Black Demons for Slayer. But you can swap that out for the Helm of Nadas Knot. We will also be using the Ava's Accumulator, the Necklace of Anguish, God Dehyde Top and Bottom, Toxic Blowpipe, Unholy Symbol, Barrow's Gloves, Primordial Boots, and the Berserker Ring imbued. In the inventory we have the Arc Light because it has a 70% increase in accuracy and damage against demonic creatures, which the demonic gorillas are, hence the name. You could also use a whip instead if you do not have the Arc Light. Additionally, we have the Melee Switch, which includes the Bandos Tacits and Chestplate, the Amulet of Torture, Dragon Defender, and the Fire Cape. If you do not have those items, you can keep your range armor on the whole time and just do an Amulet, Defender, and Cape Switch. 
The rest of the inventory is four prayer pots, a ranging potion, a super combat potion, a royal seed pod to teleport to the demonic gorillas, and to the bank when each inventory is ready. Once you have your inventory set up, use the seed pod and teleport to the tree gnome stronghold. Go out the door and head northwest. And then open the other gate, head northeast, and enter the cave entrance. And then follow this path and begin killing the demonic gorillas. You will have to switch prayers throughout the fight, and I am not going to explain exactly how to kill them, but you can look it up. If you want me to make an in-depth guide on the demonic gorillas, let me know in the comment section and I will do that. The demonic gorillas are very profitable, and the items they drop include rune plate legs, plate skirt and chain body, the dragon scimitar, law runes, death runes, and runite bolts. They also drop grimy quorms, catatines, dwarf weeds, and lanatimes. They also drop Renar seeds, Snapdragon seeds, Torsto seeds, U seeds, Magic seeds, and many other seeds that are worth bank. They can also drop Prayer Potions, Sharks, Coins, Ceridoman Brews, Javelin Shafts, Rune Javelin Heads, Dragon Javelin Heads, Adamant Bars, Diamonds, and Runite Bars. The item that people camp them for that also brings the most profit per hour is the Xanite Shard, worth 15.5 million GP and drops 1 in 300 kills. They can also drop the Ballista Limb, Spring, Light Frame, Heavy Frame, and the Monkey Tail, which are more rare and are really just troll drops. If you kill the Demonic Gorillas, you can get 1 mil an hour, but if you receive a Xanite Shard, which you are likely to, it jumps to 2 mil GP per hour. The next monster is extremely popular, especially when rebuilding. This monster is Zora, a pretty powerful boss. This boss requires the completion of the Regicide Quest, or up until you reach the point of Port Tyrus. I would recommend 70 plus defense, 80 plus range, and 80 plus magic. Additionally, you must have the protection prayers, but you should probably have a higher prayer if possible. I would recommend at least 45. Zora requires range and magic to kill effectively, and this is how we will be doing Zora in this video. If you want an in-depth guide on Zora, let me know in the comments because I will not be going into extreme detail, I will only be telling you the basics. The gear we'll be using for magic will be the Ancestral Hat, a God Cape, definitely get that upgraded, I just haven't done it yet, the Occult Necklace, the Unholy Symbol, the Trident of the Swamp, which can be substituted for the Trident of the Seas, but I do not recommend not using a Trident, you should at least use the Trident of the Seas, Arum's top and bottom, but you can use Mystic if you cannot afford wearing Arum's, the Mage's Book or the Book of Darkness, which is a cheaper option, the Tormented Bracelet, Eternal Boots, and the Ring of Suffering with Requels in it. In the inventory, we have our range switch. If you get good at Zora, you can increase your switches, and if you are just starting out, you will probably want to limit your switches. I actually haven't done Zora in close to a year, so I will be using a six-way switch for range. The inventory has the Toxic Blowpipe, which is almost essential to doing Zora effectively, but you can also use the Magic Shortbow or something else, but I highly recommend against that. I also have the God Dehyde top and bottom, which can be replaced with Armadil, then the Necklace of Anguish, the Ava's Accumulator, and Pegasian Boots. We also have a Zolandra Teleport to make our trips quick and efficient, a Ranging Potion, a Magic Potion, a Prayer Potion, an Anti-Venom Plus Potion to negate Zora's Poison, and the rest of the inventory is Sharks and Karambons, and a Rune Pouch with House Teleports for quick restores. Keep in mind that you can use better gear such as the Imbued Heart, the Ancestral Robes, or the new Assembler, but I do not have these yet, so this is the gear I use. When you are geared and ready to go, teleport to Zolandra, board the ship, pot up, and run to the bottom left corner and begin your kill. I'm not going to explain how to do Zora because it is complicated, but the basic concept is that Zora has four forms. The green one attacks with range and you attack with mage. The blue attacks with mostly mage, but you can also use range. The third form is reddish orange and uses melee and you just avoid the hits. The final form is the jad version that switches between range and mage and you alternate your prayers during the attack. If you plan to do Zora, you will definitely need to look up a guide on learning the rotations and even print on a piece of paper with the rotations so you can learn it quicker. I am not extremely efficient at Zora, but I still get kills and make major profit. Zora drops many profitable drops, including always dropping Zora scales and also the possible drops are battle staffs, dragon medhelm, dragon halberd, death runes, law runes, Chaos Runes, Snapdragons, Dwarf Weeds, Toad Flax, Torstals, and also the majority of the more valuable seeds like the Magic Seeds, the Snapdragons, and the Torso Seeds. It also drops less valuable seeds as well. It can drop Snakeskin, Runite Ore, Pure Essence, Flax, U-Logs, 
adamant bars, coal, dragon bones, and mahogany logs. It can also drop Zolandra teleports, manta rays, antidotes, dragonstone bolts, grapes, coconuts, swamp tar, and more Zora scales. The drops that camp Zora for and make it the most profitable are the Tanzanite Fang, which is worth 5.2 mil, the Magic Fang worth 5.1 mil, the Serpentine Visage worth 5 mil, and the Uncut Onyx worth 2.7 mil. Zora can also drop the extremely rare Tanzanite Mutagen and also the Magma Mutagen. Also, since Zora is a boss, it can obviously drop the pet. If you kill Zora, you will average around 160k GP per kill and make around 2 mil an hour. This can obviously increase if you get better drops or become more proficient at killing Zora, and it can also lower if you are averaging less than 20 kills an hour and have bad RNG. Zora is extremely profitable and one of the most camp bosses in old school RuneScape, so if you have not tried it, I recommend you start now as you will not regret it. The next and final monster on this countdown is Callisto. Callisto is a very powerful wildy boss that can make major bank if you safe spot it and camp it for a while. Since Callisto is in the wilderness, you will likely be PK'd a few times and have to run away every once in a while, so only bring items you are willing to lose. The method we are using will require being able to wear full Varax, so you will need 70 plus defense. If you are going to solo Callisto, I would highly recommend base 90 melee stats. If you duo, you can have lower stats, but we will be soloing Callisto. We'll be using the Varak method, so we are wearing full Varax. You could also use the Vagoras Chain Mace and some Prayer Gear or High Crush Gear, but I'll be using the Varax method because I think it is slightly better. In addition to full Varax, we are also wearing a Glory, a Mage Cape to help PK or Splash on us, Rune Boots, Rune Gloves, the Explorer's Ring 2, and 20 Bronze Arrows. In the inventory, we have a Magic Longbow to create our safe spot, 4 Super Restores, 6 Ceridoma Brews in case we get PK'd, 1 Super Combat Potion, 1 Antidote Potion for PKers and the Spiders nearby, an Anacarl Teleport to get there because we do not have the Elite Wilderness Sword, the Royal Seed Pod as a one-click level 30 Wilderness Teleport, Black Dehyde Top and Bottom, which helps PKers splash on us, and the rest is Manta Rays. The inventory can vary, but this is the inventory I use. Once you are ready, teleport to Anacarl and run southeast. Run around the lava and head west. Then equip your bow. Make sure it is on long range. When you see Callisto, attack him. Then run east and hide behind this second tree until Callisto comes close enough. Then run north, praying protect from melee. Callisto may hit you here, or he may not, but if he does, just eat. Then run to this X and stand on it till Callisto is stuck. Then run to the east of Callisto and start attacking him after you pot up. The safe spot works very nice and you will take no damage. All you have to do is pay attention if PKers are logging in or not. Odds are they will eventually and you will just simply run away by wearing your full black dehyde or you may get PK'd and lose some loot. You can also anti-PK and bring something like Dragon Claws if you're willing to risk it or bring the Din's Bulwark to make yourself harder to PK. After you get an inventory, just run south and teleport out. Callisto is very profitable, especially if you don't die to PKers. Callisto drops the Rune Pickaxe and Two-Handed Sword, the Dragon Two-Handed Sword, Blood Runes, Chaos Runes, Death Runes, Soul Runes, Cannonballs, Uncut Ruby and Diamond, Mahogany and Magic Logs, Limport Roots, Red Dragon Heights, Coconuts, Uncut Dragonstone, 100 Grimy Toad Flax, and Very Profitable Seeds. It drops the Renar Seeds, Snapdragon Seeds, a Magic Seed, a U Seed, and the palm tree seed. Callisto can also drop coins, dark crabs, super restores, super compost, dragon bones, dark fishing bait, elite clues, long bones, and curved bones. The main reason you want to kill Callisto, besides its many profitable drops, is the dragon pickaxe drop worth 5.3 mil and the tyrannical ring worth 1.5 mil. Callisto is a wilderness boss, so it can also drop the cub pet. If you camp Callisto, you should average 15 to 20 kills an hour and make 1 mil plus GP an hour. If you average closer to 20 kills an hour, which would mean max stats and not getting PK'd, then you would average closer to 1.5 mil an hour. Callisto is very profitable, but remember you will get PK'd quite often during peak times. That brings us to the end of the video. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please leave a like so I know you want more of these types of videos, and leave a comment if you want me to make an ultimate noobs guide on any of these monsters and I will get that started. If you have any suggestions for other high level monsters you want to see me test out or that you think deserve a spot in this video, let me know and I will add them to my list in the next video. Also I have a clan chat that has a lot of PVMers and people that want to hang out. We're looking for more active members, if you're interested in that, the clan chat is just hard Blitz. The Discord link is in the description as well. Remember to subscribe to see more of my content, and thanks guys for watching. Stay tuned for my next video.